Well, hello everybody. We're back for a new training now. Actual effective music advocacy. You're joining me just in regular life. This is what Oregon looks like. Let's talk about music program advocacy. I do a lot of it. The reason why I do a lot of it is because I actually help schools around the world set up music programs that create human thriving, that create student thriving and academic thriving. And I do that most often in countries that are not first world. Now, the thing about that is that people in the first world, sometimes, maybe even often, they have money for music programs. And even when they don't have money for music programs, they're convinced that they're worth it. On some level, they're convinced that they're worth it. However, if I'm in a country where poverty is high, the question, why do I wanna do music, is actually a big and legitimate question. <laughs> why in the world would I be teaching these kids how to read and write music and play an instrument if they need to be worried most about getting a job and feeding themselves? So let's start this new series, Real Effective Music Advocacy, with what I tell people that are running schools and they have no music program and they don't see why they even should. Number one, the point of music isn't music. This is actually going to probably bother a few of you because many of you want to see new musicians being made. And frankly, all of us want to see new musicians being made, but let's talk about that for a minute. Is the whole point of learning an instrument to become a professional musician? I have friends who have said to me, we should be weeding people out as much as we can of music programs because there are too many professional musicians as it is. Now the assumption there is that the point of being in a music program is to make professional musicians. But what if I told you that 60% of medical doctors in the developed world are trained musicians? What if I told you that three out of the four guys that landed on the moon were trained musicians? What if I told you that two thirds of every American president and more of British prime ministers and French prime ministers studied music seriously? The reality is that the wisdom that is gained in studying music has a direct correlation, a direct correlation to general human success. I've actually been a private teacher as well as being a classroom teacher for my entire career, which is coming on decades now. And I am very happy to tell you that the majority of the people who graduate from me do not become professional musicians. Do they minor in music? Yes. But I have one young man I'm thinking of even right now who's in applied physics with a minor in composing. And he got to applied physics through music because he got so interested in what was going on inside the piano. And we were using emotionally intelligent music instruction. So he was able to explore what it was that he wanted to explore. And as he explored it, he got so into physics that now he's at one of the best physics programs in our state. The point of music isn't professional musicianship. The point of a music class is human success and human thriving. And when you point that out to people, when you show people, actually there is a direct correlation between what happens in a music classroom and general human success, it's a huge selling point especially if you can connect the dots between what you're doing in your program and how that success comes about. The next thing that I share with school directors, school owners, people who run schools in non-first world countries is that music is math. And now everybody knows this, even people in non-first world countries know this. So let's talk about how music is math. Did you know that when kids are reading music one note at a time, like this, melodic music. When they are reading that, it is actually spatial distance over time. That's geometry. So when kids are reading music one note at a time, they are actually doing geometry in their brains without trying. When kids are reading music like this, that processes in the brain 
as algebra. So now imagine that you have a three or a four year old doing some piano work, or you have a kid, for example, in one of the classes that I run that is reading this music at two and a half, three and a half. They're doing geometry and algebra that early. How much would your administrator pay right now to have a program that got even their youngest students doing geometry and algebra without knowing it. Now those are the two things that I tell school directors, school owners, school administrators, if I just have three minutes with them. If they let me into their school and I look around and I can actually see what they're doing in their school, there's a couple other things that I share with them. And that's coming up in next week's training.